Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of the world's biggest stars and some of my favourite people. And we've got two whopping great big ones for you today. Claire Sweeney, how are you? Hello. I'm Tony good. Morsley, nice to see you. When you say great big ones, <laughs> this is what I'm leading to. Here we are at Hairspray in Sheffield, and I've been begging to talk to you for nearly a year, and I've been begging to see the show for a year, and I finally got to see it here in Sheffield, and it's terrific. There aren't many shows that go on tour that compare to the West End, but this actually does, doesn't it? Well, do you know what? We've been very lucky, very lucky that we got Drew McConey on board, who's the hottest new choreographer around. Um, and he's done something special to the show that I personally think wasn't there before. Um, and he's just taken it to another level, hasn't he? He really has. His choreography is brilliant. And also it is, is casting for the dancers as well, well, the ensemble. And, you know, he, he's just picked the creme de la creme, really. Brilliant. What's it like being you coming into this show and doing it eight times a week? Because you've got to give it everything. There's no phoning it in. It's a high energy show, isn't it? Yeah, no, the audience won't let you phone it in. I mean, Hairspray's got its own followers. So um, we kind of take the lead from them, really. I mean, you go out and you feel that audience straight away and we know if they're enjoying themselves. And the, as soon as we hear that coming back at us, the show just goes up a notch. And like you say, I mean, the music's so, it's so up there you just you just can't help but enjoy yourselves and you can see when you've seen it the other night um how much we are enjoying ourselves by the end of the show we're bouncing up and down with them it's fantastic <laughs> you're following in big braziers because i mean michael ball mm-hmm. did this and brian Connolly, two phenomenal mm-hmm. west end yeah. performers was there a moment when you thought should i do this or shouldn't i no absolutely when, when this was first offered to me i said no absolutely not mainly because i'd not done a musical for 18 years i was quite comfortable in my comfort zone doing lots of television and nice films and stuff and I thought I feel too old to go back on tour and I'm, I'm living the easy life but it was my agent really she said to me you spent three years at drama school trying to hone these amazing skills and if you don't do something soon you're going to lose them and I thought do you know what she's right I've not done anything for 12 years I haven't done a musical for 18 years so I said okay I said I'll go and I'll have a listen to Hairspray I put the CD on and it took me about five minutes to say, yeah, I want to go for that. I thought I'm going to have a good time doing that. And I went for the interview and I got the job the next day. So here we are. And it's interesting. I saw it originally on Broadway nearly 15 years ago with Harvey. And you've got that sort of affectation that he had, which is we are clearly watching a guy being a woman. But by the end of the show, we believe you're real, which is the key to his yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Well, I mean, for me, that was the big challenge. I mean, I'm 20 stone. Shut up, Claire. And six foot four, a bit more maybe, a bit more. <laughs> All them takeaways on tour. And no, I, and I thought, I can't disguise the fact that I'm a 20 plus stone, six foot four man. And I thought, if I tried to do that, I think John Travolta tried to do that in the film and he put that high pitched, affected woman's voice. For me, that didn't work. Um, so I thought I'm gonna go completely the other way and hopefully use all my other skills to try and get the audience on side. So it was a challenge for me to get them over the fact that they were watching a six foot four, 20 stone man and just sort of join her gradually on that journey, which hopefully we've cracked because I mean, they're so on side with her by the end of the show. And I thought your timeless to me was one of the best I've ever oh, seen. The chemistry you. between you and Peter was really lovely. Yeah, no, thank you so much. Me and Peter have a very similar off stage relationship <laughs> that we have on stage. And it kind of filters through. We're, we're, we're extremely fond of each other. What that means is you boss him about. I boss him about. <laughs> and he lets you boss him about. He lets me, yeah, yeah. He's, he's quite henpecked, both on and off stage. <laughs> he's great in the role. And then we turn to you and look at what you do with Van Tussel, which is so remarkable because we, we hear the name Claire Sweeney and we know that you're an actress, you're a TV star, you've done movies, we know you've done musicals, but hearing you in this, it really gives you a chance to sing and shine. These songs are great for you. It does. I mean, to be honest, I don't really see this sh- show as a great show for singing for me. I see it more as a, just a great acting role. Because um, I've done shows where I did Tell Me On A Sunday where it's 28 songs on your own and that is, a, you know, that's a nice thing. But this to me is just kind of, she's such a great character and I'm enjoying playing the character really. She really <laughs> has got some balls, one. this woman, more than you in a way. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, you, you've seen where the point that she gets to at the end. I mean, and it, it still changes from night. People don't know what she's going to do from night to night, and, which is hugely enjoyable for all of us as well. And may I say, you came among 
monsters on Monday night and you smelt delicious. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, do you know what? I noticed. You know what I do before? Because <laughs> Joe and I know where I've been. I make sure I cover myself in Joe Malone and get mouthwash on because <laughs> I know that I'm, I could be straddling someone in the audience. So, uh... And you do waft as you come past. So it works, that Claire. <laughs> That's really funny. Let's talk about both of you individually. When we look at you, Tony, I yeah. think most people most recently will know you for Benidorm. Mm. I'm going to get on to that. But what's extraordinary about your CV is you have done more stuff than most people can do in a lifetime. Yeah. It's incredible. I, I was really lucky right at the start of my career. Um, I, 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 the first job I did as a drama school was a musical theatre job, actually. I did um, Pickwick with Harry Seacom. And I'm not a singer. I would never claim to be a singer, so I thought I can't go down that route. So um, I got chosen to do a film called A Life for a Life, the Stefan Kishko story, which people from the North will be more familiar with. It was set in Rochdale about an injustice of a guy who was sent to prison for 16 years. Um, and from that, it gave my career the biggest kick up the bum. Um, I was just very lucky to be in a wonderful film um, written by wonderful Peter Berry and directed by a wonderful guy called Stephen Whitaker, who taught me so much about working with the camera. And it just moved me to a different avenue, really, and to a different level. And um, on the back of that, well, the first thing that happened on the back of that, I got a job in Sleepy Hollow. Tim um, Burton <laughs> happened to be in England when it was aired on TV, staying at the um, the Dorchester, and phoned my agent the next day and asked to meet me. So I went to meet Tim Burton at the Dorchester Hotel, who was just got out the bath in his dressing gown, and said to me, oh, Mike, I saw you in this movie last night, and I'm, I'm doing this movie called Sleepy Hollow, but I, it's mostly cast, but I've got a part that I would love you to know. And he just gave me a little part in his film, um, Sleepy Hollow, which I ended up being Where on for about three months. Um, in England, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was also um, mainly around Marlowe in Buckinghamshire. Mm -hmm. But you no, know, things happen because of that film, and people remember that film for a long, long time, and I won an award for it. Um, and yeah, it just set my career flying, so I was really, really lucky in that respect. And then with what followed, I was lucky as well. And you've done loads of credible stuff. Then we see you as Kenneth. Yeah. And it somewhat defined you. It's the thing mm. that people love the most. It's the mm. thing that people fell in love with. Are there moments you get in that wardrobe and say, I'm not putting that on? I, I don't think of it. They, they did want me to go topless in the very first episode. And I said, absolutely not. I don't want to go topless. And they said, but Johnny Vegas does. I said, well, good, good, good for Johnny. Yeah. I said, I don't want to be topless. I said, me being topless in a two minute scenes, me, me wobbling around the pool for six hours a day. And I said, it's not gonna happen, which is kind of where the funny t-shirts came in sort of thing, which I, I, I just think it's better. It'd be too distracted of my gut bouncing around your, your telly all day. So um, yeah, no, I, I am horrified sometimes when I walk in. A lot of it is my own fault. A lot of it, I say, shall we do this? And um, I suggest things to them. Um, yeah, and we've got some more crackers coming up this year actually for series nine that they sent me some pictures of the other day. But and I love it, I mean, what a gift of a part, do you know what I mean? Um, you're right, I mean, I, I, I've had a really varied career and for me, Kenneth's the icing on the cake. I mean, it's, it's so nice to go to work and laugh and not have to cry all day. And I so love that you embrace it because you could be resentful of it mm. looking at your CV. I mean, you are basically a classical actor who's mm. gone into this role yeah. and nailed it. When you walk down the street, I guess you just get nothing but warmth. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you, you get warmth because I, pl I play a warm, loyal, loving, funny, cheeky character. And I don't resent Kenneth at all. I absolutely embrace him. And I'm very, very grateful to Darren Litton for giving him to me. And continuing to, because some people to, have yeah. come and gone. Yeah, no, absolutely. There's lots come and gone. Um, I've been there now for, is it six years or seven years? And I'm about to go back and do series nine. Good for you. It's brilliant. And then we look at your career. And again, Claire, you've done everything. I mean, let's start right at the beginning with Ken Dodd. Doddy comes here and still sells out. And there you were all those years ago. Does that sort of pay off being around people that great? I was ever so grateful because he was so instrumental in encouraging me at the beginning and getting me on his shows and just giving me experience and advice, really. He was brilliant. He was um he was really, really helpful to me, and I really appreciate. It. I'll never forget. I was doing. Um, he invited us. He was on a panel show at ITV London Studios, and he invited Mum, Dad, and I down. And remember the Tom O'Connor show, that entertainment. He was on that. So in the dress green room after, there was lots of stars milling around, lots of uh, execs from ITV and all that. And Doddy came in and stood with me, my mum, and Dad. I was fifteen at the time in the corner and just gave me advice and chatted to me. And, you know, he, 
he just had time for me and that is the most valuable thing I have to give someone time and I really appreciated it and again to be given that enormous stage with that bigger star I always say to people you forget that he was a musical star in his own right I mean those CDs oh. he's the third best selling male solo artist wow, in England that. ever yeah. in the 60s it was massive he's Gosh, got a beautiful voice a beautiful I mean, voice yeah, really really, beautiful. really beautiful. good yeah. and he, his partner Anne used to sit in the wings and write down the gags he told that night to make sure he didn't do the same show when he went back to the same venue next time. <laughs> I thought, it's just brilliant, Crazy, absolute yeah. brilliant. And then from there, you went on to forge this incredible career. I suppose for you, Brookside was the moment where you realised you'd made it, because it doesn't get much bigger than that. Or were there things before where you pinch yourself? Do you know, everything's relative, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> Tony and I, we were in my flat yesterday. Um, we, we, we started doing this thing of go, uh, watching theme tunes, shows that we watched when we were kids. Oh, remember this one? And we were playing the music. And my one was Love Boat. And I always wanted to, I mean, I was obsessed with Love Boat when I was a kid. And I always had this vision of me going up the gangway, <laughs> waving, carrying a vanity case, right? <laughs> and when I auditioned for the cruise ships and I got on the cruise ships, and it was like a float and rep company. We used to do all different shows, learn shows, put them on, be doing plays. And I felt I'd arrived then because I was traveling the world. I was doing all these shows. I was waking up in a different country. And everything is relative, isn't it? Because I, I loved Brookside. It was great to be home. It was great to be on TV. But if you're talking about actual pleasure in your work, I got more pleasure singing and dancing on the cruise ships. And I guess that's a yeah. family where you can have fun whether you're on or off. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> you know, I've kind of enjoyed every moment. Do both of you pinch yourself? I mean, it's tough to forge a career in this business. Getting there's one thing, staying there's quite another. And there are so many people who get to sort of dip their toe and then are out of the business within minutes, and you're still here. It is a luxury, isn't it? It's an absolute luxury, and I'm grateful for every minute that I'm here. And <clears throat> yeah, and I actually can't believe I'm still here after all these years. Yeah, no, Do you I'm... know how funny you are? <laughs> is that what you try to be? I wonder whether you see yourself, because it's hard to get perspective on yourself. Do you realise when we see Kenneth, for example, how hysterical that is? And I think it will become iconic, that role. Well, I mean, I, I, Kenneth will be nothing without the words I say. Do you know what I mean? I, I, I'm not a natural comedian, so... Um, an artist can't paint without a brush, no, but it's also it vice versa. He's a miserable bugger, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm aware from what people say to me on the street and the love for Kenneth. Um, we're going to get that now all the time. Do you realise how funny I am? <laughs> Tell that to the director the next time he heckles you over your time. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and where Redner's concerned, of course I can hear the laughter coming back at me um, and the warmth. So... Um, yeah, hopefully I'm getting it right. You are naturally funny. You are, you make me laugh. We do laugh together, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's it like on the road? Because let's face it, you've been doing it a long time and yeah. it is the same show. You might be able to do the odd bit differently here and there, but ultimately you've got to get out of the theatre within two mm -hmm. and a half hours. Is it a struggle to get through the discipline of that or are you just making it fun to enjoy and be present? It is difficult to get through the discipline of that. And it's something that we see in the youngsters that have just come into the show. They haven't learned that discipline yet. They will do, they'll learn it eventually. And as I did, I mean, I was so undisciplined when I started doing this. And that first job I was telling you about with Harry Seekin, I let him down twice on stage within two nights. At the same point, I didn't come on stage because I was messing around with a dancer in the wings. Just <laughs> giggling and being silly and not concentrating and completely let Sir Harry seek him down. I was the punchline to his joke and I didn't come on for it. <laughs> and he was stood there looking into the wings with his arm out to me, beckoning me to come on. I apologised to him the second night in exactly the same place. I did exactly the I same thing. I can't believe that. And he then had to sing If I Ruled the World to me while the colour had drained from my face. And he suggested to me afterwards that I might be feeling a bit sick and I immediately latched up and went, I'm not feeling very well, Sir Harry. And bless him, such a lovely man. He sent some pills up to my room, to my dressing room. And, but it was, you know, it was the biggest lesson I ever learned. And if people aren't disciplined in this job, <laughs> it doesn't work. I was going to say, work. you wouldn't do that twice, but you did. Well, did. <laughs> it made me feel better that, with that story because I missed one of my entrances. I was sat on the toilet with my spanks around my ankles. And, I've got an image. And I had no speaker of the show um, going. Right. And next thing I'm hearing down through town is, Miss Sweeney to the stage. And I'd missed one of my entrances and I couldn't get my spanks up on time. 
And it actually traumatised me because I have never missed an entrance in my life. But Tony made me feel so much better with his Harry Seacombe story. Yeah, you, twi- you twice in two nights. Yeah. Unforgivable. You think you're the only person who's ever done it. Yeah. And it's something that youngsters do. It's part of the learning process, right. but you have to learn quickly on this job. You have yeah. to because if you're not disciplined, the whole thing that creates the magic will fall apart and the audience will start to see the holes. And I guess with something so wordy as this show, you can't mess around because you start yeah. mucking with the timing and the whole yeah, thing would just exactly, be a mess. Panto, exactly. I suppose, is similar, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, no, it, 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 it's tricky. And I mean, we've got these youngsters on stage who are so fabulous at what they do. And sometimes they can be a little bit noisy and they're not in the scene. And we, we, we keep plowing at it and we say, come on, guys, pull it together, pull it together. And because the show will fall apart um, without their input. Do you know what I mean? And they just haven't realised the value of what they give at the moment. Or indeed the grandeur of being in a theatre like this. Does it ever become normal when you walk out and see that? I mean, this is a good example. The Theatre or Nottingham's another one. These are beautiful palaces of show business, aren't they? They are. And sometimes, you know, Tony and I, if we're, if we're totally honest, sometimes we go, oh my gosh, it's Groundhog Day. Here we go again. Um, we love the bits of sitting in the dressing room having a gossip having a cup of tea you know we love all the ritual around it and sometimes you do get tired doing the same lines every single night but then the audience is like rocket fuel you know when you see the audience loving it and clapping and cheering we come off buzzing we are, it's great isn't yeah, it yeah but we're, we're, and then you realise how lucky you are to yeah, be it's true. doing what you do and how many people would want your role as well I mean they're two mm, dream yeah. roles in, in musical mm. theatre yeah. um, how are you you must be exhausted for a start I mean you've got this new baby how's that going because I mean you never stopped do you even when the baby was born you were still kind of the baby around and being a mum at the same time as being mm. a star it's tough and that, I was doing panto when he was nine weeks old. I said he was, he was getting breastfed by a genie. <laughs> you know, poor Jackson. He's only ever seen sequins, crowns, and glitter. You know. He may become Kenneth. <laughs> and he's seen lots of men dressed up yeah. as women as well. He, he, he sees me come into my dressing room and I wave to him as Tony, and he's all happy to see me. Then I walk out of the dressing room dressed as Big Scary Edna, and he doesn't quite know what to make of it yet, does he? <laughs> <laughs> and it makes me laugh because Tony is kind of not child friendly and he, he's really not into kids but he, you've really started melting with Jack I'll like turn my back and I'll turn around and he'll be like playing a game with Jackson on the iPod or making a hat for him or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yesterday we were singing to him no, we were talking about the kids TV themes we put Skippy on and his ears pricked up he didn't they Skippy, he loved Skippy didn't he da, 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 da. Yeah, he loved, he loved it yeah, yeah yeah wasn't that the Adams family you just did no that, that's da, 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 da. There you go. <laughs> Skippy's slightly different. Do you know where we're from? We're both from Liverpool, both in the same industry, both a similar age, and we've never met. And I might get like all these wasted years when we could have been mates. I know, we grew up f- five miles apart. I know, I can't believe yeah. it. Thank God you don't hate each other because this could be the worst gig in history. Well, I was actually avoiding her for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> But we did share a dressing room in Ipswich and it went a bit tits oh, up, didn't God, it? Yeah, we, we nearly killed each other in Ipswich. Yeah. We had to share a dressing room just because there was a lack of space. <laughs> we said, oh, we share a dressing room, this'll be fun. It was a nightmare. Well, what was the worst? In there. Well, what it is, at 20, at 19 minutes past eight, every single night I FaceTime my baby. But obviously the baby doesn't talk, so there's lots of, nya, nya. Jackson, Jackson, <laughs> are you Jackson? Nya, nya. And this can go on for like 10, 15 oh, minutes, oh, it's, right? It's like slow torture. And I it say, really is. It's worse than me talking to you, isn't it? <laughs> and I'm like, bye bye, Jackson and his nanny. We're getting string words together. I, mean, <laughs> I thought Jackson was a really lovely name until after a week in Ipswich and Jackson, Jackson. <laughs> and then he killed her. And then so I booted her out of the dressing room. She started sitting on the stairwell going, Jackson, Jackson. The dancers upstairs started complaining. <laughs> <laughs> if only people knew I think they should put a show on behind the scenes because I think that's as inter- yeah, en- entertaining yeah. oh, and as interesting oh yeah no, f- far more so sometimes isn't it I mean the stuff that goes on we, we can repeat a lot of it do you do this because you can't walk away from it or do you do it because you want to do it to keep you going because you love it so much because some would say just go and be a mum and then come back and that's always the toll I watch Loose Women I'm, I'm constantly confused what women should be should they be working and leave the baby or should they be at home with it it seems like it's a tough time to be a mum who's going to pay my mortgages it's a job you know I don't do this I did not go back to Panto nine weeks after the baby was born just to get a bit of accolade dressed as a genie. I don't, I don't need that. I had all the accolade I wanted with my baby and my family. I'm a single mum and I've got to pay the bills. And it's the only thing I know how to do. 
I'm, I love it and lots of perks come with it but it's the only way I know how to earn a living and I've got a child to keep and property to keep and, and I've got to pay my bills and you do it so well and that's why you're both still here can we just before we go do one thing about the legends you've worked with because you've both worked with so many incredible people for you who was number one what was the moment when you went wow that's a star there's two moments actually there's my first one was I'm, I'm a massive Shirley Bassey fan and I'd gone there with all the gays and thrown the rose and <laughs> done all that and then one day I got absolutely drunk with her and um, I did a concert with her at the Royal Albert Hall and I remember holding her hand and taking a bow at the Royal Albert Hall and my mum was in a box and I looked at my mum and I went can you believe this I'm stood on stage next to her holding her hand taking a bow and that for me was a real moment of because I'm such a fan it was like wow the other one was um, doing Guys and Dolls with Patrick Swayze. And I knew he was a star and he was big in the 80s and box office was good in the West End. And then when we opened, the road had police on and barricades and it was like absolutely full. We were in Soho and the whole road, road was full of people or screaming and shouting there was police holding people back and I, and Patrick was my mate by then we'd been in four weeks rehearsals <laughs> together and, and I, I was like oh my god I forgot Patrick I forgot I didn't realise he was like a mega star and a legend so yeah and, and as for seeing your face on a poster does it ever become normal when you walk past a theatre like this? Um what a funny question. I don't know. I don't think about it. Do you? Uh, I, do, I do think about it. Yeah. No, yeah. When we sort of you're walking through Sheffield and your face goes past on a bus. Oh, we and were on a bus. We buzzed when we yeah, saw the bus, didn't yeah, we? No, yeah. It, it is exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Exciting yeah, yeah no, I won't, I won't so do Again, that. you take it for granted. You don't think of it because you don't see it. But to me, when I walk by, I think, God, I'm just going to go and see those. It is extraordinary. I mean, not many yeah. people get their face on the side of a building or yeah. the back of a boss. Wow. Yeah, I remember, I remember in, um, in Malvern, we were on the well, sliding that, doors, I, like yeah, a full size hotel. I was like, wow, we're on sliding doors. Yeah, no, that, that's exciting. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I mean, the we, Empire in Liverpool, that was great. The Empire for both of us was was really great. I mean, they put a massive poster up outside on the roof, didn't they, for yeah, us? And it was wonderful. I, when, when I arrived in Liverpool that day, I must admit, I, I, I took a yeah. detour and drove past the Empire. So, that, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that was where I first saw yeah. a, a theatre show, do you know what I mean? So, I, yeah. I, that was really special for me. Yeah. But um, with regards to my heroes, um, this is an easy one, Judy Walters for me. She was like a, a childhood hero and she'd done a lot on the Liverpool acting scene in the 70s yeah. and 80s. So she was a huge star to me. And then I got to play her son in I think called My Beautiful Son and then went on to do two more things with her playing her friend in the film about Mo Molum that we did. And then I did um, I played her evil sidekick in a thing called Ruby and the Smoke. And so that was a massive um, ambition filled for me. And aside from her, Johnny Depp. I'm not usually starstruck, but with Johnny Depp when I did Sleepy Hollow, I was. And I'd stopped smoking when I was doing Sleepy Hollow. And we'd done this scene, me and Johnny. And he said to me, hey, Tone, you want to come and roll up? And I was like, oh, I can't end down a cigarette with Johnny Depp. So I went and smoked with Johnny Depp behind the scenery and it nearly killed me. But I thought, no, nah, I'm going to get through this, do you know what I mean? So I can say I've had a roll up with Johnny Depp. Is he a nice guy? Lovely, really nice guy. Is he gorgeous? Yeah. He's very chiseled. I, I thought he was sucking his cheeks in. He's got that... Really? No, there was dimples. I, yeah. I thought he did it on purpose for the camera, but no, that it's like he's got this was, bone structure. Is it good watching him work? When you watch them work, him and Christina Ricci, um, you really re realise how little they're they actually nothing. do. They're doing nothing. And I thought, God, this is going to be rubbish. He hasn't done anything, <laughs> do you know what I mean? And then obviously you see it on a big screen. It's like, oh, God, no, he's doing everything. It's all, yeah. yeah, and, that, I mean, yeah. and again, you learn so much from yeah. watching people who've done it before you. And again, what a privilege to be around yeah. this level of people absolutely. and you're yeah. on screen with them. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, I mean, what's this that you keep huffing and puffing with? Well, yeah, sometimes well, I've huffing. been smoking again. This is why I'm three stone fatter than three years ago. <laughs> is, it, is it the 11th of February? Nearly tomorrow, isn't it? I've stopped smoking three years tomorrow. Oh. Wow. So this is my dummy that is, um, they call it vaping. Everyone's vaping these days. And apparently they're now giving them out on the NHS. So um, this is the harmless and closest way I can get to a cigarette. You can't lose weight, though, because Kenneth needs to have a few pounds does, on him. But you know what? There's limits. I mean, those hot pants are disappearing up my arse now. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> See, the, the costumes are still the same, but I've got bigger. So. <laughs> Do you worry about your own health? Is it something that is that the next thing? You've stopped the smoking, which is the yeah. worst. Now the, what is it? Snacking carbs? What is it? Well, yeah, yeah. No, we're, we're actually both on diet at the moment. I've actually lost a bit of weight because... Why are you on a diet? I've, I've never got rid of my baby belly. 
stop. So I, no, I, but, I got on tour doing this show night after night. I would lose weight, and apparently most people do. But I must be the only Edinburgh that's got fatter. <laughs> I mean, because we're, we're devils, aren't we? I mean, we're, we're quite partial we're, to a spring got, roll. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we both got um, a little. We're both addicted to food, and he talked me off the ledge yesterday because we had to walk past <laughs> Cosmo's buff. You did. You talked me off the ledge. You were brilliant. Told you I was having the big buffet, but I oh, did. Yeah. I did slip up and have a cream egg in. The shop next door, didn't I, yesterday? Yeah. No more cream eggs. No more cream yeah. eggs. No more cream eggs. Listen, yeah, I no, wish I you both well. I could talk to you all Thank day. You. What an amazing career both of you have oh, got and continue to have. Uh, good luck with the rest of the run. Thank Hairspray's on here in uh, Sheffield at the Lyceum and then continues around the country. You're back in Benidorm in a month. In a month, yeah. Before that, we're going to Cambridge, Edinburgh, Inverness, Bristol, and then I go. Thank you so much for talking Thank to me. You. I'm such a big fan because you two are the epitome of pros. And if people want to see how to do it and have a long career, do it properly. Because both of you have, haven't you, really? You've worked hard at it. There's none of this right. going in for the quick fame and getting out quickly. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I, I've, I've, I mean, one day I was appearing in Sleepy Hollow with Johnny Depp. The next thing I was in Where the Heart is up in Yorkshire. Do you know what I mean? So that, that's <laughs> nothing more humbling than show yeah, business, is it? Yeah. Claire Sweeney, thank yeah. you so much. Thank and Tony, great to talk Cheers. to you. Thank you.